It's the league meetings. We all talk about the owners, but there are head coaches there as well. And they're talking and they're talking about quarterbacks in the NFL draft. Several coaches provided a little bit of insight into their draft plan. So we're going to do a little read between the lines into what some of these coaches have said. We'll start with the team that has the number two overall pick. New head coach Dan Quinn said this, quote, It'd be, a fi- it'd be fair to envision we'd be taking a quarterback to say where it'll happen. I think that's a better question for general manager Adam Peters. So, uh, Brady, is there any actual possibility that they trade out of the number two overall pick? Yeah, maybe up to number one, right? If you get a scenario where maybe the Chicago Bears uh, aren't as heavy <laughs> in on the Williams as Washington. I mean, that would be that'd be about it. I mean, I, I can't imagine that the, the Washington – commanders would would trade back out of that and risk going into the season without one of the top quarterbacks in this year's draft class. So uh, if anything, I'd be thinking maybe they're talking about trading up uh, to the number one spot. It wouldn't cost them that much to move up one spot. Uh, Not quite the King's ransom we've seen in years past, or even the fact that the commander's organization has been a part of in previous years. So it's hard to believe right now. Uh, It's kind of that time of year where uh, you know how how I know your lines because your lips are moving. Uh, it's gotta be, you gotta be careful what you read from the tea leaves with the owners meetings or anything really leading up to the draft at this point. Yeah. To, to me, this is what do they call it. Brady and Tyler being tongue in cheek. That's what Dan Quinn is doing right now. Like there's n- absolutely no way they're not taking a quarterback at number two overall to Brady's point. We know who the offensive coordinator is, right? He was USC's. He worked with Caleb Williams last year. So if anything, they would maybe try to figure out how to move up to number one to get Caleb. I don't think Chicago is moving away from that pick no matter what. Um, but yeah, Dan Quinn, come on. What are you doing here? Dude, you're taking a quarterback number two overall. Yeah, I know. I know he's definitely lying. I mean, I think that's very clear and obvious, but let's just play the game here. Let's say that they do trade out of the number two overall pick. And is there a quarterback that you see Brady that could be in the back end of the first round where they could kind of, you know, not necessarily the, Obviously, the Williams, the Daniels, the Mays, the McCarthys is is the would Penix be that guy that's at the back end of the first round, possibly that this type of team would target? Uh, potentially, yeah. I mean, I, I think the the big question about him is the medical. But sure. for me, you know, he would be the guy that I would take a good, long, hard look at because his play the last two years mimics a lot of what you saw from CJ Stroud. I mean, elite accuracy from the pocket downfield. I think he moves well under pressure. I think the biggest thing working against him is the fact that he didn't play his best game in his last game. But outside of that, if you just take him for that one game, small sample size, you're going to miss out on his entire body of work. And he's a player that led Indiana to one of its best seasons ever. Uh, During the course of his time there, transferred to Washington, never really looked back and was one of the most prolific passers the past two years. So I think there's a lot to like about Michael Penix. Uh, you do have to get comfortable with uh, the fact that he's a left-handed quarterback. So the way you might configure your offense, call your offense is going to be flipped or different from a righty. Uh, a lot of people too get concerned about, hey, now your left tackle is not your blind side. Now he's your your you know front side tackle, uh, and your right tackle you better feel good about. In today's NFL, you're going to have two good tackles because usually most teams have two good edge rushers. So that's not as big of a concern as I think as it used to be. Uh, but he'd be definitely a guy to take a look at. Bo Nix is another one. Uh, extremely accurate, well-prepared for the NFL level, had a litany of offensives that he went through from his time at Auburn to his time at Oregon as far as different play callers. So he'd be another guy that I think gets some consideration uh, based on his you know, his trajectory and path throughout the course of his college career. And let's look at the Chargers now really quickly. They already already have a first-round quarterback in Justin Herbert with a just absolute ton of potential. It'll be fascinating to see how him and Jim Harbaugh pair up. But Harbaugh did bring up his former quarterback in Michigan's J.J. McCarthy, saying that he's the best quarterback in this draft. He plays quarterback the best of all the quarterbacks. He's a winner. So, Deuce, what do you think Harbaugh is actually trying to say here? Is he just trying to help out a former player? That's exactly what he's doing. And, and Harbaugh has been saying this since the beginning of, you know, these players finish, you know, their regular season and championship run. He's been saying J.J. McCarthy, as he should, right? It's his ex-coach. or not want to say ex-coach, his former coach. And he, he's landed on the line for his player. And that's what he should do, right? And also, I think he's fleecing people to try to come up at number five. And look at them being in cat purgatory. I think that's one team that could potentially move back now, just knowing Jim Harbaugh and, the way he he thinks on the football field, uh, it's it's going to be hard for him to move off that number five spot because you know Brady's got a 
a guy that, that went to a school that's a really good tackle there. And we could see him potentially take him and move him to right tackle. And now they got bookend tackles probably for the next, what, eight to 10 years, Brady. So it, it'll be hard for him to pass that up. But when you also look at their, their team, they need some cheap labor, Brady, right there in cap purgatory. So uh, they want to get some guys for cheaper. And the only way to do that is to move back in the draft because what the number five pick is getting paid compared to what the number 11 pick get, gets paid is, is a lot different. So uh, I can see them potentially moving out of that spot. But to me, Tyler, this is just a coach looking out for his young player, trying to maximize his value in the draft and, and have him go as high as possible. And also what this does, Brady, it makes Jim Harbaugh look good if he has a quarterback that goes in the top three or four picks, right? You have that on your resume. He could add that to not only being a national champion uh coach but also a coach that's been able to turn programs around really quick so now you add uh, you know I coach a top five quarterback looks really good on your resume yeah look I think he knows his quarterback in this draft class better than anyone else in regards to JJ McCarthy and what he had over the course of his tenure at Michigan so uh, do we expect him to talk highly about his former quarterback who helped him win multiple Big Ten championships and a national championship of course but I also think there's a, a fair amount of honesty too because I think there's been some questions about J.J. McCarthy within the Michigan offense and, and what he was asked to do or not asked to do for that matter. And I think Jim Harbaugh is out there trying to kind of correct the narrative and saying, like, look, we didn't need to uh, open up J.J. McCarthy to do a bunch of different things. I mean, if anyone looked at their personnel, too, at Michigan, that really wasn't what they leaned on in recruiting and development anyway. It was their offensive line, their running backs, tight ends. When they asked J.J. McCarthy to make throws, he made throws. There's, there's in instances of him having to compete in shootouts and showcasing the ability to make throws when the pressure was on. So I think there's a lot of honesty in what he's saying. You can see it if you if you break down, watch his tape. I had the opportunity to be around the team a lot this year. And I think he also touches on a lot of the intangibles that teams are looking for in a guy, by the way, who's not like you know Bo Nix or Michael Penix or uh, some of the other quarterbacks that we're talking about in this draft class who are much older too and have played a lot of college football at this point. Uh, Jaden Daniels, for example, too. He's a player who's a little bit younger, a little bit greener, but maybe that's not such a bad thing because they do feel like there's so much more upside for him as compared to a guy who's 24 years old, might be more of a finished product coming into the NFL. I, I think all things can be true, right? I think he can be talking up his player, you know, kind of dispelling a notion about his former program at Michigan. But I also think he recognizes that this is a quarterback class that a lot of teams are gearing up to possibly trade up for, whether it's Minnesota, even talk about possibly New York. They, they have the number six overall pick. Maybe they kind of leapfrog a little bit. I think he's either trying to A, create some draft buzz for his team to get some more draft capital to move down, as you were saying, dudes. Or if a team bumps up and wants to go to the number four overall pick with the Arizona Cardinals, well, guess who falls to Justin Herbert? Marvin Harrison Jr., which is a phenomenal development for that offense who just lost Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. So I, I, there's just a lot of layers here. I think all those things can specifically be true. But but let's get a little crazy, right? Let, let's just get absolutely wild. Let's say that Jim Harbaugh absolutely loves J.J. McCarthy, and he wants him as his quarterback for the Los Angeles Chargers. Is there any scenario where that happens? I know financially that probably can't happen. I think the dead cap hit was like $100 million for Justin Herbert. But, dudes, <laughs> would, would, this, would this be absolutely insane to think? Yeah, I don't think there's any possible way that Jim Harbaugh trades away Justin Herbert. <laughs> Not only the dead cap, but it's just like I don't think Jim Harbaugh's ever had a quarterback with the talent that Justin Herbert has had. So just imagine Jim Harbaugh being able to, de I mean, I would say develop him because he's still a pretty young player, develop him into being a winning quarterback. Because that, That's been the, the knock on Justin Herbert, right? He hasn't been able to get over the top. They were up by multiple touchdowns in that, that playoff game versus Jacksonville, and they all came crumbling down in the second half. Last year he got banged up when a lot of people thought that team would maybe even push the Kansas City Chiefs for, you know, the AFC West crown. So – that's been the knock on them, and, and nobody – and we talked about this earlier, Brady – nobody can turn around a program quicker than Jim Harbaugh, right? So people were wondering how Justin Herbert would feel in that offense because he's probably not going to ask him to throw 40 times a game, right? They're going to run the football, but I think that also will protect Justin Herbert where you can see some of that arm talent come out only when you need it, right? It's not like he has to go out there and put up 35 points a game because Jim Harbaugh is going to lean on that defense He's going to lean on the run game. That's where he's done it. Every program he's been at, whether it's University of San Diego, whether it's San Francisco, whether it's Michigan, 
They are going to run the football and play physical good defense, and that's what they're going to do with the uh, Chargers. So now with Justin Herbert, you feel like it's not as much pressure on you, right? You're not going to have to do everything by yourself because you have a coach that's going to put a plan in place that when we need that big arm that's been blessed by the gods, we're going to bring it out we're going to use it. But I'm not going to go out there and ask you to throw 45 times a game. I'll bite Sully. I'll go ahead and play crazy with you here. Um, it would be amazing. Like, like, There's a thought, too, that I'm like, well, if you do love him so much, you could just draft him at number five if he ends up being there, right? Uh, and then you just look at maybe trading Justin Herbert and, and seeing the bounty of picks you would get for Justin Herbert because you would still have some suitors out there, right? Like, we're if that, if that ended up being the case, okay, that means we probably saw quarterbacks go one, two, three, and J.J. McCarthy was not one of them. So that's three quarterback needy teams that are now off the board. But that still leaves you Denver. It still leaves you Las Vegas. It still leaves you Minnesota. So you would have three suitors right there that you could potentially deal off your quarterback to. Now, the finances, I'm not going to get into that because, again, we're playing crazy here, okay? It's like when I ask my wife to go on a shopping spree, uh, there's just no limit to what she's, what damn she's <laughs> going to do. But what, what I'm saying here is, yeah, there's a world where crazy can exist and we can play this scenario, right, where maybe a team's willing to mortgage the next three first-round picks, a second-round pick. Who knows the bounty of picks they could get? And if you're Jim Harbaugh and you're in this rebuild mode, why not sit there and say, well, I know what I'm getting with this quarterback from the college days. He's going to know the offense day one. And if we're rebuilding the first year anyway, why not get younger, cheaper if possible with that rookie quarterback and then try to get a slew of picks back for it? So again, crazy idea. Definitely probably not going to happen, but it's still fun to entertain and think about the fact that there would be a number of suitors out there that would have to potentially put together a pretty big trade package. Let's not forget too, Minnesota has loaded up on some draft picks. So I mean, you'd at least would think you'd get two of their first round draft picks this year alone that they've already accumulated. Yeah, no, it would certainly be one of the biggest uh, trades in NFL history in terms of the package. And yes, the popsicle headache of the finances, I don't necessarily want to jump on. But real quickly, let's do Sean Payton and the Broncos. You know, we're talking about quarterbacks here. They might be a little bit too far down the list to maybe acquire one. Obviously got rid of Russell Wilson, but here's what he said. Realistic. The Broncos to move up in the 2024 NFL draft. It's going to it's good to be the Cardinals general manager, Monty Awesome for it right now. So he's already kind of tipping his hand that they possibly could move up. Do you see them, dudes, real quickly moving up to the number four overall pick to possibly take a quarterback? I don't know if they actually have the firepower when you look at teams like Minnesota or the Raiders that could potentially move in front of them to to make a aggressive move to try to get maybe a J.J. McCarthy or if a Drake May passes, you know, pick four or five. I just I just don't – I think this is a rebuild year. I mean, they're on the hook for so much money because of Russell Wilson. This could be a scenario where it's almost like a tear it down type year and try to rebuild next year, right? And once you get, you know, Russell's money off the books and, you know, they, they because of the extra $30 million, they felt a lot more comfortable taking that hit from Russell Wilson – because they they were afforded more money to put into that dead cap hit, so uh, I just I just think Sean Payton is talking, uh, being tongue in cheek again. Now again, they could be aggressive. I just don't foresee it happening. I could see them potentially taking a filler on a you know a quarterback later on in the draft. Brady, where are you? Uh, yeah, I don't know. If they have the draft capital without mortgaging the long term future of things, and I'm kind of curious to think uh, or to see what the new ownership group thinks of Sean Payton. Um, they've moved on from Russell Wilson, so they've given Sean Payton his wish, but now they find themselves in this precarious situation where they're trying to clean up their own cap situation. Large, A large part will be being paid to Russell Wilson this year and then build back this roster to be a contender in a division in which you play with the defending two-time Super Bowl champ. So uh, it's a tough spot to be in. Um, you know, Is Jared Stidham going to be the guy this year? He looks like he's in that pole position right now, but there's some veterans out there they could get, and maybe Denver – takes a flyer on a guy in the second round that they really like if they find themselves in that spot uh, or, or maybe in the first round, you know, maybe they, they do what some people believe would be overdrafting a quarterback in that spot. Who knows? But uh, Sean Payton's in a tough spot. And I think it'd be great to think they could move all the way up, but in years past, we've seen teams really pay a premium to move that far up to be able to take a quarterback. And are you willing to do that for what would be assumed to be the fourth best quarterback, in this draft class, at least based on, how the the one two three would go, and again that would be a first. We've never seen four quarterbacks go one two three four before. 
Uh, I'm not sure this is going to be the year it happens. And it also kind of takes some like pre-draft jockeying to collect more picks like we saw with Minnesota to even position yourself to possibly make that type of move. So I, I agree with you. I think it'd be tough for Denver to kind of vault that highly in the NFL draft.